You know it's true what they say, an empty long box is not a happy long box. Hello everybody, it's me Ghost Critic and it's time for the annual Boxing Up video. Uh, for those of you who have never seen one of these before, uh, I have a playlist of all the years gone by where I basically box up all this year's uh, comics, give you a little rundown of what I've been collecting, remind you of what perhaps uh, you missed, um, what finished this year, what I basically just thought of them. Um, I have my trusty long box. I don't quite think that everything is going to fit into here so that's going to be fun. Um, I often get asked this question so I will answer it now before it gets asked. Um, I basically, yes, put it all in this box and then it gets put in alphabetical order in all the boxes that you see in my other uh, videos that are behind me. Um, I would love to put them in publishing house order as well but that's a little bit too much at the moment. Uh, maybe somewhere down the line that extra organisation will happen as well. So strap in, get yourself a beer, a coffee, whatever, because these are usually quite long. Now I'm going to kick off with um, a random selection of kind of one shots, stuff that I tried out, stuff that perhaps has only just come out and I'm not quite sure whether I'm going to pick it up yet. Um, the pile isn't that big fortunately this year. Um, just last week, let's kick off, um, it was a one shot X-Men Exterminated. It was pointless. That's all I'm going to say on that. Uh, Brandon Graham, love his artwork. He brought out a kind of final chapter to his multiple warheads uh, kind of universe. There's no way of explaining really what goes on in this. It's very, um, it's very, I was going to say psychotic then, and it probably is in parts, but it's like being on LSD. It's a wonderful comic. I love Brandon Graham's work. Um, the Snagglepuss Chronicles issue number one, that's the only one I've got of that because I just really didn't like it. I was hoping that I could find uh, one of these kind of Hanna-Barbera imaginative, uh, reimagining uh, characters that I'd enjoy. I missed out on the Flintstones one from I think the previous year. I thought this would be the next one because I think it is written by the same person. Um, Mark Russell, but it just did nothing for me whatsoever. Uh, also tried out Fal Dalrymple's Proxima Centura. Um, again, this is another one where there really is no storyline to it. The artwork is lovely in it, but I just didn't think it was worth the money to keep going on it. Um, I picked up some kind of anniversary special issues of comics that I wouldn't normally pick up. Um, one of those was Action Comics 1000. It was fun for what it was and I picked up uh, this variant edition of uh, Amazing Spider-Man 800 with a Mobius cover there. Um, a little mini-series finished off, and I didn't realise it was only going to be three books long, uh, but it was fun nonetheless. Batman, Creature of the Night, Kurt Busiak and uh, Jean-Paul Lyon. Uh, great artwork. Kind of a bit disappointed with the storyline at the end of the day. I was expecting it to go on a little bit longer. Um, I was excited to have Exiles back on the old pull list, but again, this was another one that just really did nothing for me whatsoever. Did not live up to my expectations from the original series. Shame. Um, I was going to try out an Iron Man book and perhaps, I, I mean, I enjoyed it. The artwork was fun. Dan Slott and uh, Valerie Schitti and Edgar Delgado. Um, I don't know what didn't make me pick up the next one, but um, I didn't. The Century got really good uh, reviews from all you lot out there, but again, it's one of those comics that I just read the first one, really enjoyed it, but it just didn't end up on my pull list. Um, another is kind of Hanna-Barbera, um, Looney Tunes, DC kind of crossovers. This time it was The Joker and Daffy Duck, are written by Scott Lobdell. It wasn't very good. It wasn't. 
wasn't very good. One of it was too serious and one of them was too silly uh, from what I can remember. I don't know if the second part of this has come out because I know it was only a two-parter and I did have fun with one of these Infinity Warps, Soldier Supreme, uh, Captain America mixed up with Doctor Strange. It was fun. Uh, there was a lot of what if uh, titles from Marvel coming around. I didn't really see anything that I enjoyed uh, or would have enjoyed reading apart from perhaps this one which was The Punisher. What if Peter Parker was The Punisher? It didn't do it for me. I was very disappointed in this, it has to be said. Uh, Duke Joint, number one from Image Comics. Didn't pick up the next one, don't even know if it's come out yet, probably has. But it was it was interesting, but didn't grab me enough to go and buy another issue. Uh, there was a DC Winter Special from Swamp Thing, an 80-page giant uh, from, was it Tom King? No, it, yes, well, Len Wein, Tom King, Jason Fabok, I think Kelly Jones is in there as well. Um, it, was, it was a fun story for a one-shot. Uh, always nice to see Swamp Thing making a, making an appearance in the year. Uh, this has only just recently come out. I'm kind of on the fence with it. Scott Young and uh, George Corona's Middle West uh, looked amazing. It was fantastically looking. Uh, but it didn't have the Scott Young kind of cartoony vibe that I was hoping for. He is only just doing the storyline on that. So those are all the kind of one-shotty kind of deals. Uh, we'll go for the smaller um, imprints for now. Um, Exo Man of War from Mackin and a variety of um, artists. To be honest, I'm not digging this Exo Man of War, Eric back on Earth. I much preferred him on this other planet, kind of basically going up the ranks. But now, and plus, it's, it's no more of that really nice um, painted style that I really enjoyed. It, it's just kind of like, as nice looking as it still is, it is kind of like basic kind of art style comic that you expect within um, kind of modern day contemporary comic books. Um, but as I said, I kind of want him to go back out in space and not be kind of stuck on Earth. Uh, again, uh, you might have forgotten that Department H, another Matt Kim, this time from Dark Horse, that finished off earlier in the year, finishing off our big murder mystery story underwater in that kind of deep sea laboratory. Um, I am not going to spoil that for you. Definitely worth um, a look-see. I, I really enjoyed this and couldn't wait for each issue to come out and... Um, you should go out and buy the trades uh, forthwith. What's next? Uh, another um, Dark Horse, but this time from the Burger Books imprint, a small uh, four-issue anthology series, Anthony Bourdain's Hungry Ghosts. Um, I said it's an anthology story of ghosts uh, and ghoulies and demons and such like, all uh, kind of interwoven with this narrative of a big banquet and the servants telling stories and hopefully not being taken over by the demon. I think it was in the mirror. I really wanted that series to go on and on because I thought there was some great potential there, but unfortunately it didn't. Hopefully it will come back. Obviously, um, Anthony Bourdain died this year, um, <clears throat> but there's no reason why his name still can't be attached to that. Uh, we're moving on to some uh, Vertigo books, uh, by the looks of it. <coughs> uh, and these are mostly uh, the, the Sandman universe came to us in 2018. Uh, kicked off, let's do this the right way around, with The Dreaming. Really enjoying this series. Uh, Cy Spurrier and uh, Bilkus Evely. Bilkus Evely's artwork on these are fantastic. Uh, the interior uh, art is just amazing. Uh, Jay Lee doing the covers on this, which is always uh, pretty heroic. 
Um, then what came out next? I think it was uh, The House of Whispers. House of Whispers is taking a little bit longer to um, get into. Uh, obviously The House of Whispers is a new element to the Sandman universe. Um, so probably kind of getting used to where it sits within um, within that universe but um, it's okay we're doing all right with it uh, books of magic has a lot of promise in, in in it I still don't understand why he's back to being kind of a schoolboy again when we've already had previous stories where he's a much older kind of um, late teens, perhaps early adult uh, character, but perhaps it will be explained somewhere along the way. But um, who's that? Cat Howard and Tom Fowler, Jordan Boyd doing that. Uh, some great artwork again in there. Uh, and finally, it's Lucifer. A few issues of that has come out. Um, I've got two here. I think there's another one out next week uh, or this week. But um, I don't know anything about Lucifer, so I don't know what's in a sense, I don't know what's going on. I do, uh, but the whole kind of back history of Lucifer is, I don't know. Uh, perhaps next year I will think about picking up the original series from Vertigo um, that they had. Uh, I get that in, try and get that in trades, perhaps. Uh, what are these bits? Um, oh, okay, we'll, we'll go here. I wasn't going to do image yet, but let's do it. Um, let's move these up here, make it a bit easier. Um, Colin Bunn and Mark Torres are doing a five issue mini series called Cold Spots. Um, initially I was quite excited about it, didn't realise it was only a five issue mini series. Um, Mark Torres artwork inside, uh, wonderfully creepy and kind of horror esque, but the story just kind of let me down. It's something that I believe. I've probably seen before, it's a little bit deja vu, you know, man goes on to Mystery Island to save a kid, bring back his wife that he's estranged with. It all sounds incredibly familiar. A new volume of Headlopper from uh, McLean and Jordi Belair uh, came out this, week, uh, this year. We've only had one so far. I think one's coming out this week. Uh, this is Headlopper and the Knights of Vendora. Um, I like the way that Andrew McLean brings kind of like four issue kind of mini series, but still encapsulates the whole universe uh, and only brings it out. You know, this is a quarterly, is it? Yeah, it only comes out quarterly. Um, you get a big, big, thick um, book though. Um, but I really enjoy that. I say every time it's kind of like the cartoon Adventureland slash Conan. And it's great. It's great. Uh, Brian K. Vaughan, uh, Marcus Martin, and who else have we got? Uh, Amunster Vicente. We'll go for that. Uh, they had a web comic called Barrier that came out. Um, they brought out the uh, first issue on Free Comic Book Day, and then the rest came out. Um, it was meant to be all about kind of immigration, but mixing it in with kind of aliens and stuff. Perhaps I need to go back and reread it as a whole rather than in these parts because I didn't quite really get that vibe. It was a great alien story, very um, kind of freaky and LSD type, but um, didn't really do much for me. Um, very, very disappointed in the last Shaky Kane uh, output. Okay, he was doing the artworks. So the artwork's always great and fun, but the storyline was just so preachy. It's the beef. Um, if there was a comic book and you were of a weak-willed mind that was ever going to put you off eating meat, then this was probably the comic for you. Um, however, I will still be eating my big steaks and pork chops and etc. But no, I was very disappointed. Uh, what took me by surprise? Uh, Joe Casey and Ian McEwan's three-issue miniseries. Again, another of those books that I wish had gone on for much much longer. Um, 
1975. Um, if you like Taxi Driver, if you like The Warriors, if you like kind of all of those kind of late 70s, perhaps black exploitation type films, this was the book for you. Mixing a whole kind of supernatural vibe on it and. I can't believe how much they got into just three issues. This was a fantastic read. If they collect this together in a nice little kind of uh, mini trade, go buy it. You will be um, well rewarded. That's what I'll say. Well rewarded. Right, so we're doing image comics. We'll have to come at this end instead. Um, we didn't get many issues of Seven to Eternity uh, from Rick Remender and Jerome Pina, but when you get Jerome Pina's artwork, then it's well worth waiting because it is, it's just above most other artists uh, currently working today. He is phenomenal. The colours, the imagination, the environments they both create uh, through, you know, mind and then to pen, to colour. Amazing. Amazing. Um, you will have already, no, yes you will, more than likely, have already seen uh, my top 10 uh, books of uh, 2018. This was definitely in there, so I won't spoil it. Uh, it's Gideon Falls. This is a book I need you all to pick up and um, and basically promote and buy and praise because it's amazing. Jeff Lemire, Andrew Sorrentino and Dave Stewart give you um, kind of horror noir in a kind of rural farmland setting but with a huge twist that I am not going to spoil for you. Um, very kind of psychological, uh, again it's just a great horror story done very well, very creepy, very kind of claustrophobic. Uh, Andrew Sorrentino and um, Dave McLean doing some phenomenal artwork on this, panel structure, all that amazing stuff. Um, it, it's highly recommended. This was how I used to get excited about Deadly Class. Gideon Falls is basically this year's Deadly Class. That's what I'm saying to you. I'm talking about Deadly Class. This is another book that didn't really come out much this year. Um, from Rick Remender, Wes Craig. I can never remember his last name, but Boyd. Um, we got four issues in all in 2018 very 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 disappointed uh, which is why normally this would be the book of the year as always um, and there just wasn't enough of it to warrant that this year hence Gideon Falls I'm really pushing that because love it love it um, another book that Surprisingly came out more than I thought it had with five issues. It's uh, Jonathan Hickman, Mike Trogotta um, and Martin's East of West. Slowly, slowly building to a crescendo. I believe it's finishing at 46. Um, so, you know, perhaps half a year's worth of storytelling uh, to go before that all wraps up. But... Um, it's been amazing and I'm glad I stuck with it um, from the very beginning. Um, a book that's taken its year-long hiatus, which I may use an excuse to stop buying it because Saga just wasn't there for me anymore, um, perhaps because of the solicitations. Uh, it's all very well taking this... Uh, short maybe one or two months but a year I can't be waiting a year for another issue um, this isn't non-player um, but and then what you get isn't as exciting as it as it originally started with so perhaps we will never see that on my pull list again um, another book that finished this year, another Jeff Lemire book. He had a huge year in 2018. Um, it was Descender. And of course, we're getting a new series from him within the same universe. I think it's called Ascender. Very clever, that. Very clever. 
uh, think it's around a world without robots, without machinery, um, heavily kind of magic based. So that's going to be an interesting new turn for that universe. But as I said, Jeff Lemire, what a great, great year he's had. Um, I didn't see that this had come back and I didn't pick it up, but I did really enjoy it. And we had the last issue before it took a big long break, which is why I didn't know um, it was ever going to come back. But Jordi Belair and Vanessa Del Rey's, um, I think hopefully you can see that uh, very dark cover, but it is a, a Redlands um, kind of witches in the um, South of America, I don't know, Southern America kind of deal, uh, but good. Another book that finished in its present format and I'm kind of interested to see uh, where it's going to go when it comes back and that's Lazarus, uh, the kind of spy thriller set in a kind of post-apocalyptic universe. Um, they took a kind of brief hiatus um, and did this X plus 66, which was, um, I believe, was it six stories? Yeah, six different stories within the universe, but kind of all linked into what was going on in the main series. Uh, really in, enjoy uh, Greg Rucker and um, Lark's artwork uh, on that. Um, I think I've said before, I don't know why, but Greg Rucker blocked me on Twitter. I have no idea what I said or what I did wrong, but apparently he does it to a lot of people. Uh, moving on, <laughs> we were lucky to get one issue this year and it was so long ago. Um, again, it's Jonathan Hickman's and it's The Black and Monday Murders and Tom Coker on art. Um, with this, it's kind of like... Yes, I enjoy it when it comes out because it is the whole package, uh, the storytelling, the artwork, um, the characterization. It's all fantastic. But come on. One issue in a year? I need more. I need more. <clears throat> Moving on with the image. Um, it stuck with me. It's Paper Girls. Um, I don't know if it's just my stubborn streak, it might just be, it's kind of like, I need to know how this story ends, where it's going to. I mean, the characters are great, you, you do kind of fall in love with them and you're kind of heartbroken and elated and cry with them and laugh with them um, and endure the danger of it all, but that's about it, there's, there's no kind of much forward momentum with a story uh, and I kind of guess Brian K. Vaughan has got nothing to do now he's left Saga behind for a year he could put a bit more effort into Paper Girls um, uh, another series that finished hopefully it will come back in some some way I hate Fairyland uh, Gertie did finally get out of Fairyland at the end of this uh, run but there's always an opportunity for her to come back. I just love the way these two and Jean-Francois Bellieu um, mixed a lot of different genres along with a kind of cartoony fairy tale violence that they added to this, um, whether it was being in hell, out in space, uh, fighting ninja mushrooms. Um, it was just amazing uh, and a, a great, great ride. Um, I kind of gave up with this after five issues, did nothing for me, but although I was really looking forward to it from the initial offset, it is The Realm. Uh, I got one issue in 2018, it's really just not worth talking about. Uh, Monstrous has taken a number of hiatuses, um, but it's still, uh, again, Fantastic to look at. Santa Takeda's artwork is is amazing. So detailed, so imaginative. The story, it's you know, I I've said in the past when I was reviewing these, um, you know, it's got that kind of steampunk fantasy vibe to it. Uh, anthropomorphic characters, 
uh, lots of magic. Again, another book that's got a very Conan-esque vibe to it. Uh, again, I just would like it to be a bit more um, regular. Um, Stephen Scrooge, Dave Stewart, and Phonographics finished off their Maestro's run. Uh, a fun look at a father-son relationship. Uh, the disappointment of the father to the son in a kind of crazy uh, magic demon realm. Um, it, it was so it was over the top violence, very dark black humour. It was hilarious. It was beautiful artwork despite its kind of graphic nature, but I had fun with it. Uh, Black Science next year. We're meant to be seeing the end of this in its last uh, story art, but Rick Remenda and the amazing Matteo Scalera uh, doing a fantastic job on here. The last storyline, very intimate, where the uh, husband and wife, or rather the estranged husband and wife, uh, trying to come together, um, <coughs> but still both of them, Remenda and... Um, Scalera managing to hold on to a bit of the action to keep the pace going as well. Great stuff. Um, Ed Brubaker, Sean Phillips, Elizabeth Brightweiss have finished off their Kill or Be Killed run. Um, and it was fantastic. I say it after ed the end of every one of them. You just don't know how they can get any better with the next um, kind of volume or their next project. But they do. And Kill or Be Killed was fantastic. If you've not read this... This is definitely another one for the um, for the trades, or if you're lucky enough, find the mountain singles. Book that's kind of I've been tempted to kind of drop, but again, it's one of those books I need to know um, how this is all going to end. It's David Lapham, Stray Bullets, Sunshine and Roses. I mean, it's hilarious. It's farcical. It's dark. It's kind of like that crime street level slice of life and then he throws in these kind of fantasy elements with Amy Racecar. You don't know whether she's really real or just a figment of um, uh, the, 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 oh God, what's her name? The, fe the main female protagonist in this. I can't remember her name. There are a lot of characters in Stray Bullets. Uh, we're up to issue 40. Issue 40, it was kind of like, right, if this book, if this title isn't any good, I'm going to drop this now. But it was so good, and so I've now got to keep on going with it. <laughs> uh, we're nearly at the end, I hope, of the image books. <coughs> um, Jeff Lemire makes another appearance. Is He just... Threw it out there and it all was great. Royal City, uh, a personal favourite of mine this year, um, about a uh, young writer coming back home uh, for the first time. His father's um, in hospital after having kind of stroke or a heart attack and coming to terms with the history of his younger brother dying and how all the family members are coping in their own ways. It was a beautiful personal piece, um, a brilliant characterizations in this, uh, one of my favourite books, it has to be said, of 2018. And finally, I think for Image, um, and this is another book we wish had gone on a little bit longer uh, from Wes Craig and Toby Cypress. It's the Gravediggers Union. Uh, I was initially sold on this that it was kind of like BPRD for the working class, uh, which is a very apt uh, kind of synopsis for it as these just kind of working class guys who uh, clean up after everyone, who put down all these ghouls and demons and zombies, uh, get involved in a much bigger uh, uh, conspiracy uh, with cults and alien monkeys. Um, and again, it ended up being very much about a father and a daughter's relationship. So I'm just going to pause this video just for a second to catch my breath and then I'll be back with the Marvel and DC books. 
and we're back. Um, we're going to move on to Marvel now. Um, and surprisingly a lot of Marvel titles this year. Um, from being hardly any... Um, it seems to have a bit of a role reversal, perhaps with DC, which I'm not really picking up a great deal of, apart from like the Vertigo titles. But um, this year, Uncanny X-Men kicked off a another volume, and with a weekly series from a whole host of people, uh, a Brisson, Rosenberg, Thompson, is Asa, Azra, and um, it's disassembled. They're doing a weekly series until the storyline um, is over and then it goes back to, I guess, a monthly, I hope. Um, what's there to say about it? I've been away from X-Men for uh, quite some time, apart from the kind of X-Men Blue title. I'm just going along for the ride. It's fun for now. It's entertaining. I'm learning bits as we go along. I'm seeing a lot of characters that I recognise, uh, but not necessarily the way they're characterised now. Hey. Um, Astonishing X-Men, I really enjoyed Charles Sewell and Phil Noto's uh, original um, run on this, um, I say Phil Noto, uh, the original 12 issue storyline had a different artist on each uh, book and we kind of had this new Professor X, uh, much younger looking and then by the time it came to the end, then we had uh, Rosenberg, what's his first name? I want to say Michael, I don't think it is Michael. Uh, but he's done some really great work and you're going to find out soon what I think is really good uh, from him. Uh, but he kind of got landed with Greg, landed, um, with Greg Land. Uh, whose artwork I just can't get on board with. He has his fans, I don't know why. It just looks... I know he does this kind of photorealism kind of deal, but it's bad. It doesn't look, it doesn't look right. It's kind of creepy. Um, but honestly, I'm kind of glad that run ended um, and it's all over now because I was almost, I was that, cl that close to um, cancelling it anyway. Uh, moving on and talking of uh, Matthew Rosenberg. Well, we'll just quickly, um, at the beginning of the year, we saw the end of uh, Garth Ennis uh, and um, Paula Belair team up of Punisher uh, Max, the platoon, great storyline, um, flashing out once again his um, old um, army days and then yes Rosenberg took over on the Punisher and it just got better and better and better the stakes got higher and higher and the Punisher really now is kind of uh, really fully involved given I mean he kind of had something to do with that whole evil Captain Rogers storyline and siding with uh, was it the hand or aim? That was it, um, and it's all basically building up um, and building up. Uh, and he kind of took this original series that got renumbered to um, to a point, and then we had the new series, uh, which kind of dealt with basically the aftermath of the last volume. Um, you don't have a Punisher book without Daredevil showing up once in a while, but um, just redeemed the character of the Punisher who had not been doing well under the helm of, who was it? It was a female, oh God, what was her name? I'll remember it, I will. It'll come to me or you'll tell me down in the comments. Um, oh God, there was a lot of Daredevil this, this year, why? I don't know. Did it come out twice a week? Perhaps twice a month, I should say. Twice a week, can you imagine? Um, but uh, Charles Sewell has just finished off his run and this volume of... I'm going to go through these very quickly. 
um, of Daredevil. Uh, seen him go up against some new baddies, some old baddies. Uh, Wilson Fisk got to be mayor. He had a new sidekick in this blind spot character. Um, we had him travelling over, if I remember, to China. We had the hand turning up, taking over Devil's Kitchen, as they do. Uh, and it le basically led up, there was an annual Pointless, I'm going to tell you now. Um, his twin brother, I won't spoil it if you've not read this yet, you're reading this in trade. Um, but his twin brother turned up, oh, what's that? And then we had the uh, Daredevil, the death of... And I've heard some people have been kind of disappointed with the finale on that. But, you know, it's comics. You're not going to kill the Daredevil off. So why not do a... Uh, I can't say. We'll spoil it for you all. But what they did, people aren't happy about. Uh, we saw the end of... Who wrote this? Colin Byrne on X-Men Blue. Our time-displaced teenagers. I don't know whether this really made any big impression. Um, you know, there was all this humming and hawing about, oh, they need to get back to their own timeline. Um, it's causing havoc in our present day. But then they ended up staying, and I'm just like, what was all this about? I mean, there was moments of fun. You had some silliness with Venom. Um, and got to see the Star Jammers. Um, Jimmy Hudson kind of went a bit evil, and now he's um, he's neither he's neither here nor there at the moment, to be honest. And who knows if we'll ever see him for a while ever again? Uh, Jimmy Hudson, being the son of Wolverine from the Ultimate Universe, just in case you were wondering. This box is getting very full. This isn't all going to fit in. Um, uh, Marble 2 in 1, Chips Adarsky. Um, it was a shame that he couldn't keep up uh, with the solicits on this because the, the ending of this would have been uh, so much better if it had led right into the new Fantastic Four series. But I don't know why, whether the artist... Uh, who do we have? Well, we had Perez on it for quite a while, so... And the artwork towards the end, let's be honest, it wasn't the greatest. Uh, the storytelling from Chip Zdarsky was still fantastic. Um, and we ended up, uh, I mean, all the way through it was Thing and the Human Torch. Uh, but the last two issues were given up to the Thorn, to the Thorn, the Thing, and Mr. Fantastic. And then the Human Torch with the Invisible Woman. Um, and it just rounded off the series so well. It kind of had a very Bronze Agey, high adventure feel to it that was definitely missing from Marvel for a while, which is probably why I hadn't been collecting them for a great deal of time. Um, Max Bemis did a run on Moon Knight this year. It was incredibly dark uh, and went into some very kind of adult themed um, kind of storylines. Uh, and I'm surprised there was no warning on these books. Um, uh, definitely towards the end of the book uh, with the um, kind of sadists, uh, the group of sadists and them getting, trying to get um, Mark Spector or whichever version they wanted, Moon Knight just in general, um, to join them. Uh, and the things and the trials, the kind of gauntlet that they made him do to, to become part of their team, but he was really just kind of obviously infiltrating it. But um, just a great series, um, again, adding once again an extra layer to the Moon Knight mythos. Um, spectacular Spider-Man. Uh, first book that I picked up for um, a while that was Spider-Man influenced, um, or centric I should say, and love it. Um, Chip Zdarsky again was on this. Uh, for quite some time, they went. That's it. They went back to the original numbering, so they could do a three hundredth issue. Um, but 
fun fun adventure using a lot of kind of characters that you don't normally see uh, which was always really the case with uh, Peter Parker the spectacular spider-man you know the amazing spider-man had all the the really high octane big name um, big name villains for him to fight while um, kind of spectacular spider-man had a different feel to the story and they were more kind of personal um, and the the villains he went up against weren't always <coughs> um, the kind of most notable or you know most dangerous but always kind of gave uh, R. Peter Parker or Spider-Man a, a run for his money. <laughs> this box it's almost packed now and there's still all this to go. Oh. Doctor Strange had a bit of a run. Um, oh, that's it. We saw Doctor Strange Damnation, uh, which was, I actually thought was a fun storyline. Uh, it was kind of a bit confusing because you had the main storyline and then the original title in between, you know, alternate weeks. Um, and it got a little bit confusing the order in which they did it. I don't think it, it really wouldn't. I don't think it really would have worked either way. But I don't know. It was it was strange. Um, anyway, they again there was the whole renumbering of it. Um, Donny Cates took it on for a while um, using Loki, kind of aftermath of the whole, there's the first issue of the Damnation storyline. I'm just gonna flick through a few of these for you because there's a lot, another of the titles that was clearly um, coming out twice a month. And um, then the series finished with issue 390, Donny Cates left and uh, Mark Wade and Jesus Sayers came on board. Uh, this took him out into space looking for kind of magic that he could use because there was nothing left on earth and he got basically he learned some lessons then he got back home and found he was already home um yes there was a kind of a doppelganger again if you've not read this i won't spoil it too much for you but he came home to find himself but it wasn't himself it was an imposter um we're still on with the uh marvel books it's a lot of marvel books this year um the Avengers came back. Now, I hadn't been collecting it since kind of, I think it was Siege that I kind of finished it all off on um, and gave up. And I came to them uh, just after Disassembled. So it was kind of a brand new era for the Avengers. Uh, but then I just get fed, got fed up with all the restarting uh, and not necessarily the retcon of it, but it was just like, come on, do we really need to start with a new number one? But this got me very, 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 very excited uh, because it was Jason Aaron and Ed McGuinness. Okay, Ed McGuinness is not on it um, anymore, but that first storyline with him in having the whole Celestials, it was it was a big blockbuster of an opening salvo for this new team with um, new members to it, Ghost Rider, this this new kind of up to date version one of him. Um, and I'm hooked. I think it's fantastic. Um, we got the 700th issue as well, which was uh, an epic of epic proportion. Um, I'm really happy to have uh, the Avengers back on my pull list. And another one that I was incredibly happy to have back um, in 2018 was The Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, Dan Slott finally left the series. Uh, I hadn't been picking it up since it ended when he kill killed Peter Parker in issue 700 and I just left it. And then heard Nick Spencer and Ryan Otley were coming back with a new series. Had to get it. Had to have it. And again, they've not let me down. They're really building up to something um, special here um, and have been using uh, as an annual there as well. Um, and I've been using some great heroes and villains alike and some that kind of go in between. But 
just fantastic. And Ryan Otley on the artwork um, and, and Ramos helping out here and there has just been great. Loving it. <coughs> if you can hear that, it sounds like there's a plane going over. It's probably going to crash into this building as we speak. Um, it came back after a long, long time. Sorely, sorely missed. Fantastic Four. Finally, um, the kind of, I guess, you know, the inception of Marvel, the first family um, of comics, uh, Fantastic Four, came out. I picked up some variants along the way at the start. Um, it took a little bit of time between issue three and four, we don't know why, um, and we've got the furl, the fun of the fair of the wedding between Ben Grimm and Alicia Masters coming up, which is going to be great, but I am beyond happy that I have Fantastic Four back on the shelves and definitely something you should all be picking up. Now, finally, the few DC that we have left. Bit of time, yes. Um, it's the Flash. It's the only, is it the only remaining? I don't count the other two really because they, they're not ongoings. But the Flash, surprisingly enough, is the only ongoing DC title I'm picking up. And I've never picked up a Flash series before this. Joshua Williamson still going on from issue one right up to issue 59. There's probably an issue 60 come out by now. Um, but I have loved this book. I mean, okay, there's been moments when I've kind of been a bit annoyed with Flash and his not learning from previous mistakes kind of deal. But that's just kind of a superhero genre trope, isn't it? Um, the idiot superhero that keeps making the same mistakes, never learns, always can, gets himself in trouble. And having Wally, is it Wally West? Yeah, uh, Wally West come back into the Flash for perhaps a shorter time than we'd have liked. Um, something else is going on in one of those events. Um, crisis event type things. I'm not reading it, but um, yes, absolutely. I'll flick through a few of these. Um, they've introduced this new uh, different type of forces, much like the lanterns now have all this array of ring colours. The Flash now has. Uh, let's see the Strength Force, the Speed Force, the Sage Force. And there's another one I can't remember, but. They've got all these forces now and he's finally listened to all the different other flashes of the different multiverse and he's going to go on a quest and learn about them all and be better prepared and still mess it all up. <laughs> um, we came to the end of uh, Tom King and Mitch Girard's uh, 12 issue run of Mr. Miracle. Um, I. I don't know if this all came out this year. I was very surprised I, suppose I might have just left them on the shelf to, to perhaps go back at some point and read them all in one go because I'm sure there's stuff that I missed and I kind of lost along the way. It was very, very nice to look at. I don't know whether the ending really satisfied me, which again is why I think I need to read this again. Um, I listen to the iFanboy uh, podcast, kind of Pick of the Week podcast, and they picked this as their Pick of the Week so many times, and I just couldn't understand why, and I don't know whether they've got a, I don't know, maybe they've got a sponsorship deal with Tom King, um, but I don't know if it needed to be Pick of the Week so many times. A uh, book that sadly ended in 2018, but again, it's another of those books that's going to find its way back into our lives in a different way. And that was Kurt Busiak's Astro City. He managed to finish off, strangely enough, his 52-issue run, um, which is the longest, let's be honest, an Astro City title has ever lasted wherever it's been. Um, it's landed at Vertigo, and obviously Vertigo... <coughs> 
wanted uh, this book to um, go on for, for some time um, and Kurt Buzak obviously wanted to tell his stories uh, and he was he's a master storyteller whether it's long form or short he captivates his audience so so much um, and finally um, and not because oh no it's not finally actually we'll wait we'll do that finally um, it was it was kind of sad, but then it was good because it came back. Um, we had the ending of uh, Tomasi and Gleason's Super Sons, uh, which was, I mean, it's just, it's just a fun book. Whichever way you look at it, whether it's just like the, the main title that kind of wrapped up in, in the middle of the year, took a brief hiatus, did the whole Hanna-Barbera crossover, and then came back. Uh, Tomasi on his own with Frank Barberi uh, with the adventures of the Super Sons and it's just silly nonsense but it's fun it's entertaining it's creative it you just switch your mind off you don't need to like look for subtle layers to this really um, and it Again, it harkens back to a day where it wasn't so much about all oh, this deep, thoughtful storyline that has so many layers. Sometimes you just want two kids punching some baddies out and getting into mischief, and that's what that was. If you want your highbrow, pretentious, but yet still great comic book, you might as well pick up Grant Morrison's Green Lantern. Um, I love this. I never got to talk about it. Thank God, to be honest, because I will just make myself look like an idiot because it's um, I got a variant cover there uh, for the first issue and then the second issue just came out last week. Uh, but it is... It's a strange kettle of fish, but I like it. It's... It's Grant Morrison, so, you know, if you've read Grant Morrison before, you know what you're letting yourself in for. It, it's, it's a wild ride. It's, it's full of crazy characters. Um, Liam Sharp on the art is just amazing. He creates so many weird creatures, settings. This, I can't put a... I, when the first issue came out, if you follow me on Twitter, you will see the last time I picked up a Green Lantern book. And it just show, goes to show that the kind of the pulling power of Grant Morrison on a book like this will give it. And it made me pick up a new issue uh, of Green Lantern and it's definitely going to stay. If he's staying on it for as long as he can, um, I'll be picking up Green Lantern again. Ta -da -da. It's empty and it's all dusty as well. Lovely. Uh, they are my comic books that I had over the year of 2018. Thank you for watching. Thank you for getting right through to the end. Give this video a big like. Um, share it on all everywhere. Let everyone know that you've got to the end of this behemoth again of a boxing up video. Um, Hopefully we'll have another one next year. Uh, keep the tradition going. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for supporting my channel. And hopefully you'll see a little bit more of me next year. Until next time, bye-bye.